Good morning. My name is Greg Davis and I would like to welcome you to the CBS ArcSafe webinar for remote switching on medium voltage load brake switches. Now we have four different remote switch actuators we're going to be showing today. There are more than that types of medium load brake switches. And as we go through these today, don't be afraid to send us questions and ask us, you know, even though you don't see maybe your load brake switch or the specific model on this because I can talk about other ones also that we've done and what the variations are on the ones that you're going to see today. Okay, so please make sure you forward those questions uh, in the questions and answers portion. Uh, ben will forward those over and I'll work to get those answered. The first switch we're going to deal with today is what we call the PowerCon GE load brake switch. PowerCon makes the switch. It comes in many different uh, manufacturers switch gear. So they buy the switch basically from PowerCon and then they will mount it in their switch gear. And so today you're going to see it in a piece of General Electric switch gear. It's flush mounted. You may have Kirk keys on your switch. We know how to adjust the dimensions of the RSA for that uh, modification. The other thing you'll see is this is flush mounted. And so these come in a flush and then they also come in an offset flange type mount. And so the variation of the remote switch actuator is dependent upon the mounting geometry you have to deal with. So if you have pictures, you can send those, and I'll just tell you right now, to info at cbsarcsafe.com or call us at 1-877-472-3389. This power con switch, the first thing we have to deal with is we have to deal with the interlock. And the interlock, we have a little magnetic latch to feet where we pull up the little handle here. We slide that in on the throat of the, the pin. And this is magnetic and it's just going to sit in place for us. The actuator itself is going to mount here on the left side, or the right side rather, for this version of the switch. So we'll take the magnets and turn those off. The RSA needs to be in the proper position for open and close, so it's already in the up position for us. If it wasn't there, we'd hook the RSO up and move it to the correct position. We'll slide this up here, we'll bring this over. We'll get this, and you'll see the two locators, the one here on the top and the bottom. Then we'll turn our three magnets on. And now we've got this set up on the switch. So we use the RSO1 for this. The RSO1 itself is capable of operating over 300 different remote switch actuators. Now, when I get over here, we've got uh, two different options. We've got local and remote. Uh, the first couple switches we're going to do here, we're going to do with the local operation on the RSO. After that, on the last two, we're going to use our wireless remote option. <coughs> so we're going to turn it on to local. The switch is in the closed position right now, so we're simply going to hold down the trip button. And to close it, we just reverse the operation.
turn that off, then we would disconnect the RSO and remove the RSA from the switch. Again, this comes in several different mounting options, offsets, flanges. They can be on the right side. And just to let you know, there are two models of this switch. This is what we call the standard PowerCon load brake switch, and there's actually a larger version also. Which, when we come to our next switch here, this is the GE SE series. The SE series comes in three different models also, and it's important for us to know what you've got. <coughs> so, there's a standard one, which we'd say is the 400 to 600 amp range, and then you have a larger one, which is the 800 or the 2000 amp range, and it's a different RSA for that. There's also the fixed switch like this, and then you have the rackable type of switch. Okay, and if you need remote racking for that, we can also remotely rack those switches in and out for you also with like an RS1. This actuator, you'll see on the back side of it, it has two micro switches for determining the rotation of it. You're going to see on the front side here, as far as what goes on the switch gear, this little locator right here is important for the mounting position. And so, as you have these three different types of switches that you could possibly have in the SE series, the geometry of this changes slightly based on the type of switch you have. So we have to know what type of load brake switch you have to get you the proper SE remote switch actuator. It mounts fairly easily. Once I get the locator into the seam on the switch gear, then I just turn my three magnets on. The switch is currently in the closed position, and we can see the position of the switch just above the, uh, the RSA. Now we've got it connected. And again, we'll turn this on to local for this one. And we're in the closed position, so we go to trip. And we go to close. And that's how easy it is to use the RSA 43 for the GE SE100 series medium voltage load brake switches. Let me get this disconnected real quick. And pop it right off, that's easy. The next actuator we're going to work on is the GE IC1074 switch. Now, the interesting thing about this switch is I can remember the first time I saw it up in Arkansas and it's very easy to set up and operate. So we have a little defeat and what you have to do with this switch is you have to pull up this interlock and set that in place first. Okay, and once you've done that now the switch is able to operate in range. So that's, if you don't have that pulled up, there's no way that you can operate the switch. This is the actual RSA22 is the number for this one. And we just get that on there. So we've got it on the handle. We've got it on our two locators on the top and the bottom. We turn our two magnets on. We take our power cord to hook it up. I'll bring this over here just a little bit more. This time we're going to turn it over to remote. So this time I'm going to go to on to activate the radio remote. You'll see the light come on here. So now I've got a good signal. And so we're in the open position. So I'm going to hold the close button down. And the trip button.
Now, some things to note, um, I'm just going to talk about some other brands of switches that you may have out there, like S&C. So, S&C has about three different switches we see out there. We see the adult eruptor and the mini eruptor switches. And then they've got a new series out there, which is more in the panel, requires a rotary type RSA versus the up and down lever arms. The other switches that I can think about that we may see, uh, and we've shown this in prior webinars, are the uh, Schneider HVL switches. We showed that a couple uh, webinars ago, so if you need to look up that one, we also have that series of RSAs for those. So, like I say, if you don't see your switch in the ones that we're showing today, don't be afraid to ask us questions because we have a lot more remote switch actuators for medium voltage load brake switches. And the HVLCC is the newest version from Schneider, and we have those also. They go will work with those new motor packed uh, medium voltage motor control centers, and we have the remote switch actuator for that also. The last switch we're going to look at this is the Westinghouse amp guard medium voltage motor control switch. Uh, this switch was made from 1958 to 2004. There is a newer version that's out there, so uh, it looks more like the WLI switches in terms of, because uh, it's in the newer amp guard family from the 2004 on vintage. So, but you'll find these, they may say Westinghouse or say Cutler Hammer Westinghouse medium voltage, they can be a blue color in the older Westinghouse. Westinghouse had this same lineup with a blue face on it versus the gray face that you're seeing right here. You would also see Powell Industries use these in their switch gear and it was really the Westinghouse. So it's what this switch looks like if you send us pictures, we can help you learn which version and which vintage of the switch gear you happen to have. So don't be afraid to send us the pictures at info at cbsarcsafe.com or call us at 1-877-472-3389. And that's how fast the RSA mounts for the amp guard load brake switch. We'll bring this over here. We'll work to get it connected. We're currently in the closed position, so we're going to go from cl closed to trip and then trip to close. So now we've got it activated. Hold down the trip button. Okay, and that's how easy it is to set up and operate the RSAs for these four types of medium voltage load brake switches. Now, one other topic I'm going to cover for just a couple minutes while we're waiting for questions to come in deals with training and recurring training. Okay, uh, and this isn't, I'm going to give you an example that happened a couple of years ago at one of our large customers. They had the two older electricians who were responsible for training everybody to use the equipment in the facility retire. And all of a sudden this created a knowledge vacuum for them. Uh, a lot of facilities will set up a training program, but when the two guys who ran the training program retired, they didn't bother to have somebody pick that up before they left. And so they called us about seven or eight months later said, hey, this stuff's broke, it's not working, and the real problem was that they had lost their training program. And so we worked to help them to get that reset up and get all their stuff straightened out and get them up and working. And so if you need recurring training, please contact us and we'll work to get you into the schedule and get that set up for you. And the thing to understand is while you purchase a remote switch actuator or a remote racking system from us, that's the first part of ownership. Full ownership happens when you take this over in your safety culture 
and you now implement it so that your people are using this to keep them safe, to keep your operations running in a smooth uh, manner, and reducing the exposure to hazards by using this equipment. Okay, do we have any questions yet, Ben? Um, so I've answered a couple on the, uh, the chat so far. Um, one from Robert right now, it says, what is the unit's response if there's a misalignment or the switch gets bound up in some manner? I wanted to talk about how we source the motors, the sizing, and make sure they're appropriate. Okay, so uh, one of the things to understand is our chief scientist and CEO, a gentleman named Finley Ledbetter, a genius by all imagination from everything I've ever dealt with the guy, He's our electrical engineer. At CBS ArcSafe, the people who work here are mechanical guys. So when we look at the stuff, we look at it not from root mean, trip squared, curves, smoothness of the power going into something. That's not our part of the equation. We look at this switch as a physical apparatus. It's got springs inside of it. It's got a lar an arm of a certain length. So we're mechanical engineers in application, mechanical guys with a lot of technical experience working on things. So we look at this, we say, what's the available geometry? What is the moment arm we have to deal with? How much force does this take to operate this? So when you look at the motors that we use on these, the gearboxes and items, it's because we've gone through the effort to measure these forces, to know how does this operate with a um, knife blade switch type motion? Do we have to make it so that it will throw through the knife blade switch? Uh, how, what speed does the knife blade switch have to throw at in order for it to operate properly? So all of these things we take into account when we design a remote switch actuator. For us, it's a geometry and force and speed application that we have to figure out so that we know that we've got this down and that the switch is going to operate like you need it to in the field. Next question. Uh, we don't have one at the moment. We'll give it, okay. a, we'll, we'll give it a few moments. Again, you can contact us at one 472 or info at cbsarcsafe.com. As I was mentioning before, so the PowerCon switch, you may find these things in Allen Bradley switch gear. You may find SNC switches in Allen Bradley switch gear. You can have another uh, manufacturer that uses this, whether you're looking at the VersaRuptor switches from ABB that are old ITE gear. And all these things, you know, don't be afraid to send us the, the picture of the switch and we'll help you figure out what it is you have, who it was made by, regardless of the nameplate on the switch gear. And we've actually gone out and developed uh, remote switch actuators for switches that were uh, designed, you know, I'll say 60 plus years ago. And we've made a few of them for those where we've had to go out and take the dimensions and there's no paperwork on them to even tell us what the model is. Uh, perhaps one of the most interesting we, ones we did was actually for the Army Corps of Engineers. They had a GE overhead uh, switch which we had to develop an actuator for and there was nothing that you could find in the GE library for that switch actuator and we had to go out take the measurements on it come back drop the remote switch actuator for it and we got it to work on the first time for that overhead switch and we just simply had the model number for it if anybody's curious, I could send you a picture and let you see. It's the only place we've ever run into it. So if you have something that's a unique switch, don't be afraid to call us because we will assess whether or not we're able to make an actuator for it. Last time, CBS ArcSafe, info at cbsarcsafe.com or 1-877-472-3389. Thank you. <laughs>